In his latest round of island hopping, Connor Knighton has leapt across much of the North Atlantic for a taste of the Faroe Islands. The Faroe Islands build themselves as Europe's best kept secret. So secret, in fact, that many people don't know they're in Europe. In some cases, they think we're close to Egypt somewhere, so it's really warm and, and exotic. It's not Pharaoh like King Tut. It's F-A-R-O-E, 18 tiny islands in between Iceland and Norway, officially part of the Kingdom of Denmark, and yet not quite Danish. We have our own language, which is another thing that surprises people. Levy Hansen works for the Faroese Tourism Bureau in the small capital city of Torsion. The rugged, remote Faroe Islands have just 50,000 citizens total, spread out among a patchwork of tiny, picturesque towns and villages. They're connected by an impressive network of roads and tunnels and ferries, far removed from the rest of the world. We realize that we live in a very remote place. We sometimes have this, this feeling of being like, you know, David against Goliath. In the world of restaurant reviews, the Goliath, the 800-pound gorilla, is a giant inflatable man made out of tires. Every year, the Michelin Guide hands out its prize stars to the best restaurants in the world. It's the first restaurant uh, from the Faroe Islands. Congratulations. And last year, for the first time ever, a Faroese restaurant brought one home to a small house in a small village on the side of a hill. It was so unexpected. I did not think that they would come here uh, this early on. Paul Ziska is the head chef at Cox, a 23-seat restaurant with one heck of a view. Right now, we're just going to grab this uh, seaweed here. We're going to use it for a sauce. Many of the ingredients Ziska cooks with are found on the rocky shores down below his dining room. Ziska grew up in the Faroe Islands, and he knows which weeds and grasses are the most delicious. Whoa, that's citrus, basically. Yeah. The limpets he scrapes off the rocks, one by one, are washed and transformed into one of 19 courses served as part of a typical meal at Cox. In the Faroe Islands, where most of the food is imported, Ziska was determined to stay as local as possible. You become much more aware of your surroundings when you have to kind of source the ingredients from around. The volcanic, treeless landscape and the harsh weather makes it difficult for much to grow here. Outside of the sheep, which are everywhere, there isn't much livestock. But there also isn't a place in the Faroe Islands that's more than three miles away from the ocean. So Ziska relies heavily on the sea. Each day, Ziska's team collects urchins and clams. Fresh ingredients turned into beautiful creations. We do a lot of effort in, in, in plating it so that it looks like uh, where it's from. So we might serve like a mahogany clam on rocks with seaweed around. So you really get the, the, the full uh, expression of where this special product uh, comes from. After the Michelin announcement, foodies have started coming from all across the world just to taste Ziska's cuisine. There are people that uh, will book a table at Cox before they actually book their flight to the Faroe Islands. So it's, it's definitely been something that's had a great effect on, on tourism in the Faroe Islands. The Faroe Islands may not stay secret for much longer. And where the scenery is still the biggest selling point, it would be hard to imagine a better ambassador than Ziska's food. It reflects the land he loves. Each dish, a little postcard on a plate.